Morning everybody, Gator with E-Cells E-Bikes. Today we are going to change the torque sensor out in a 3000 watt. The steps are very similar to the Super Monarch line, just a few variations, and we're going to show you how to do that today. To change this torque sensor out, we are going to remove the pedals, the silver retaining nut for the chain wheel. We will have to open the cavity up, remove the torque sensor, and replace with a new one. Whenever you're doing torque sensor work, everything has to be done from the chain wheel side first. If you try and make any adjustments on the nut on the other side, you will just spin the torque sensor inside of the bottom bracket casing and you'll destroy it. You must always start from this side so that you can push the torque sensor out and the bearings on the other side won't grab it and make it spin and shear the wiring. Now that we have removed the pedals from both sides, all work will be done on this side until we can get this torque sensor to start sliding out. When removing all of these torque sensor parts, the easiest way to remember this is removal is to the front of the bike and to put everything back on, you're gonna be going to the back of the bike. We remove the chain off the chain wheel, take the chain wheel off. Next, we have to remove this retaining nut for the torque sensor. Now with the retaining nut removed, we can get the torque sensor to slide out. The wiring might be a little tight, in which case you just need to follow the wire, get you a little slack by pulling from up here where it's entering the cavity and that'll give you the slack you need to be able to pull this torque sensor out as such. Now with the torque sensor pulled out, the bearings on the other side of the retaining bolt will not grab it, so when I remove it, it's not going to spin the torque sensor and make the wiring shear. Now we're going to remove this side, and because of the 3000 watt being a wider torque sensor, it has an extra spacer where the Super Monarch model does not, and you have to remove them both. Spacer, and now the main. With this retaining nut removed, we have to remove this cover plate only so that we can access this connection to be able to change it out. Making sure we have the right connection one of the ways to make sure that you have the right connection 
the torque sensor is going to be black as you start to undo it. If you start to see yellow, that's your one, two, three switch for your motor controls. And that's not the one we want. As you start to unplug, you'll see black. If it's not black, you've got the wrong wire. If you were changing the torque sensor in our regular Monarch line, the connection is actually underneath the bike, so you would have never had to open this cavity up. On our Super Monarch line, finding the torque sensor wire looks like it might be a little tricky because of all of this. A simple snip, you can move things out of the way, see the wiring coming out from the bottom hole, or the easiest way is, look for the wire with the silver tag. That's the torque sensor. Once again, start unplugging. I see black, I know I have the right one. If I start seeing yellow, it's not. And we're going to slide the old torque sensor out just like you would if it was a Monarch. The old torque sensor is removed. Now we would insert our new torque sensor. And to do so, what I do is I run the wiring through first, through the hole, and then I insert the torque sensor. When you do insert it, this wiring goes along the bottom. If you noticed when I undid the bolts for this cover, I didn't do these two. The reason is, is they hold the controller on. There's no need to mess with them. The only screws you have to remove are the outside ring. We have our new torque sensor and nut, but there's a little prep work you're going to want to do now that's going to save you a lot of trouble later. What I did was I popped the set of gears out of the spindle so that we can align this up. This is the part that holds your chain wheel on and that attaches to the torque sensor. And if you do not align it up now, it's going to be a lot trickier to do so when it's in the bike. If you note, the torque sensor has a keyway in it. Groove, 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 groove. Big space. Groove, groove, groove. Inside, we have the same thing. Groove, groove, groove. Big groove, big space. If you line this up now, it's going to save you a lot of trouble later putting this back together. Not lined up, doesn't want to go on. Lined up, comes almost flush. Now we're ready to install. We've taken the plug, pushed it through the bottom hole, and I'm feeding the wire as I'm pulling it so that I'm not putting any extra stress. And like I said, make careful note that this channel and wiring kind of line up with the hole. We have the torque sensor basically in place, but I'm not going to fully insert it because I have to put the retaining nuts and bearings on the other side first. If I don't put these on first, I stick the torque sensor all the way in, it's going to grab, spin, and shear the wiring on it. We're going to run our wiring back into the bottom basket. Note, arrows, make sure you line them up. New torque sensors plugged in. Gonna take that extra wiring and slack from the wiring. Kind of tuck it up in here so you don't have a bunch of extra wire laying around. But don't jam it in here in such a way that you can't access that and uh, pull any slack out you may need later. Now we can close the bike cavity up and we'll be able to
put this retaining nut back on. Now with our bottom basket closed back up, we can put the retaining nut and bearing on this side of the bike. Remember, front of the bike loosens to the back of the bike tightens. I want you to take note. I'm making sure that this torque sensor is push that way so that there's no risk of these bearings grabbing it and spinning that wiring that we just made sure was along the bottom channel. We can now put the secondary spacer ring back on. Give her a little snug, and we're ready to fully insert the torque sensor. If you note, the inside of this bearing and cap assembly has a set of teeth just like this chain wheel retaining bolt. The same tool will fit inside of there, and what that adjustment does is it moves the bearings on this side out or in. That's why the torque sensor has to be pushed out when you're messing with this side. But what this adjustment here would do is if your pedal is too close to the frame and it's hitting, you would back the bearing out so that your pedal will come out this way more. If your pedal is sitting way too far out to this side and your chain wheel is too tight to the bike, you could turn this bearing in and it would push your pedals out to the other side and bring your chain wheel a little bit further away from the frame of the bike. Once again, this is an adjustment that cannot be made until the torque sensor is pushed out. We have our non-chain side closed up. She's ready to receive the torque sensor. We fully insert. Make sure that this is all still aligned and where it needs to be. And now we can put the cap back on. The cap is on, it's time to put the chain wheel on. Remember that big notch we used on the outside to align the inside up? Well, your chain wheel has that same notch. Make sure that that's aligned. Oh, not going on. Must not be aligned. With the chain wheel on, we can replace its retaining nut. Give her a nice little twist. Make sure she's on nice and tight. Now we can reinstall our pedals. Hook our chain back on. And we're ready to ride. The tools used for this project was a BBT 
9 by Park Tools, a CCP22, this is a crank arm puller, and a BBT32. These are the specialty tools needed, and just a standard number 8 Allen, a crescent wrench, and a screwdriver. Okay, we've just successfully changed the torque sensor in this bike out. One thing to note, it's a brand new torque sensor, so when you start this bike up, you must put it in your high gear, 10th gear. You want as much torque coming from those pedals to that rear to make that torque sensor activate the first time. It'll take it a moment, but it will activate. If you try it in a low gear and it doesn't want to activate, it's because it's in a low gear and you're not forcing the torque sensor to activate. This was a video that was a specific customer request. We love doing them. You keep the questions coming, we'll keep bringing you the answers. Have a great day.